to our weekly class. This is Dr. Ariel Policano. I'm very, very happy to be with you today. It is my pleasure to talk to you about the Genius Insight. And we're um, one thing that's really nice about the program is it is updated often. And it is updated in terms of making it better, not just compatible with all of the other um, Android and iOS current platforms, but the developer, Ryan Williams specifically, is always trying to improve it and responding to our, often our suggestions for improvement uh, when they really serve the greater good. So one of the things that actually can happen now is if you're in a session and you want to go back out and retest the person, then one nice thing is that when you go back here, you'll still have that person's name there. So that's one thing that's really nice. When you go back out of your session, their name will still be stored right here. So if you're in a session and you want to retest them for any reason, when you come back out, their name will still be here, which is really kind of cool. So maybe we can just, we can't really demonstrate it on a call. I guess we could do it with a, let me just bring this up for a second. Okay, send me your questions, you guys. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the VESSEL program that's going to be available very, very soon. Um, that is for detecting where there are blockages in the vessels. And it can also be used to harmonize or open up the energy of the vessels. Um, okay, I can show, I think. All right, so let's start off with this. And we'll also be able to open up the energy and hopefully clear the vessels. There are going to be specific remedies that help to clear the vessels. Really, your vessel health is the health of your body. If your vessel health is good, the health of your entire body will be likely very, very good for a very long time. So this is my dog, actually. And if we just start here, let's just skip this. We're going to come, oh, there's a picture of me. Uh, we're going to come back. I was just doing a demonstration, if you've seen my demonstration videos. Um, and really, I just wanted to show that when you're here, when you come back to here, it's going to have the original person that you started with. And that's nice, just in case you want to retest somebody on the fly. So if you want to just retest somebody really quickly, now you don't have to go fishing for their profile. The only downside to it that you have to be careful of is that you may um, have another person there, so you don't want to disclose the first person's uh, details like date of birth. So that's what you want to be aware of. We also had a change in the image for the male, for testing guys, the little male image. I uh, really sort of bugged Ryan about this for a while. Um, I just thought that image was not aesthetically um, the best that it could be, so we changed that image in the male section. Um, there, there originally wasn't male and female um, images, and a lot of feedback wanted to, ha I don't know, I mean, I still go back and forth. People get really strung out when they see a prostate issue for a woman that they're testing. Um, you guys are all energy, right? We're all energy, and we all have very similar hormones, right? Women have some testosterone, and men have some estrogen varying levels so I don't think it's totally necessary but that said now you have those the female image and the male image um, so that's that and then if you guys want to volunteer I can take some um, birthdays so send me your birthday if you want to volunteer Sophie's joining us today Sophie thank you so much for being with us and uh, Tracy's here from Canada Tracy thank you so much for joining us um, all of our wonderful regulars are here, and we really do celebrate that. I'm glad Betty Lou has been able to get into the program today, and Karen is joining us and probably her um, group there, and that's wonderful. Warm welcome to everybody there. And Patricia hasn't been with us. Patricia from New York City hasn't been with us for a while, so Patricia, welcome to you. Jeff is joining us from the East Coast. Really glad to have you. Carol is here. And Ned, of course, is joining us. Beatrice, welcome to you. And uh, Kendra has volunteered, so Kendra, why don't we go right to you. We're going to unmute your microphone, and I'll be able to talk about the VESSEL program a bit here as well. 
So I'm just going to hide the screen for a minute and let's just go ahead and do that and we're going to hit add new client even though you can't see it it will um, zero out sort of the profile that you are using and I'm going to put in Kendra's information we do endeavor to just keep that private um, so this is one way you could do it if you were doing a group demonstration okay and then we have her information just going to put that in and then we'll see if we can get her voice recording and then we're going to skip the picture uh, the picture is important if you don't have the voice it's great to have both pieces of information just for speed today I can get the picture if I'm on a video chat with someone and I do often work that way all right so we're almost ready to go I, I am grateful that both internet and iPad are working my goodness sometimes it seems uh, quite a feat to get everything working together so okay um, and welcome Jackie I haven't seen you here before. Jackie and Kathy Kelly's here. So good to have you join us. Kirsty, warm welcome to you. Wonderful Rita is joining us. So glad to have you along here. Okay. Do we lose Kendra? All right, there we go. Hi Kendra, how are you today? Kendra, if you're there, can you go ahead and talk into your mic? Your mic is live, so we can hear you. So see if you can just uh, talk into the device that you're using. And unfortunately, we're not getting anything from Kendra. It does look like her mic was totally live and no problem. I don't know what happened there. So if anybody on here knows for sure that they can record their voice, then let me know. And um, all right, no sound. Maybe, maybe, can you demonstrate how to take an aura before reading, before and after testing? Yeah, that's easy. All right, so I don't know what happened there. It could be the speed of my internet. Let's try one more time. And if not, then we'll just skip the voice and we'll just have to use our intention. Um, oh, that's really weird. It looks like Kendra got completely, you know, it's funny. Sometimes that happens when people volunteer. It's so, so, oh, there she is. She's at the top. I don't know what's going on. Kendra, let's try to get you one more time here. Kendra, are you there? Hello, hello, hello. Talk if you're there. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. It's a bit of my pet peeve. So try to see if you can get, if you know that you actually do have a voice recording before you volunteer. If you don't know, then you sometimes you can't know. But if you know that you can communicate, sometimes it works better, you guys, if you're not calling in by phone or if you're actually um, on a desktop or a laptop. It may not work as well if you're from a tablet. And I don't know why GoToWebinar is not completely up to speed on this yet. It's a bit of a bit of a conundrum. So let's just skip that. We'll skip the voice. We'll skip the picture. And you can do this, you guys, if you use intention. I do like to use the voice in the picture because it's like gathering um, all of your goodies uh, together. You want to use as many resources as you have in order to test that person. All right. So when we're starting a test, we always want to look at the entire case. So we want to go from top to bottom and sort of um, a lot of what makes you a good practitioner is looking, just observing. So even if you think you don't know anything about health, even if you think that you're just uh, totally green when it comes to saying any health information, go ahead and just observe. So chemical sensitivities, glands. Now I like to use, lately even here I'm using things over 600. So it, um, infection, energetic disturbances, and okay, organs. That's interesting that organs and body systems are both out of balance. I wonder if there's any crossover there. Sacred geometry and solfeggiotones. So does this mean that they're out of balance in their sol solfeggiotones? They have a solfeggiotone deficiency. 
No, it does not. It means that maybe that person is, it really resonates to those high vibrational frequencies. Hi, Elfie. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to have you along. And so she might respond better to these higher vibrational frequencies. And then meridians down here. So meridians is really resonating. You see those higher energetic things really calling to her. And here she is a biofeedback practitioner. You know, this makes a lot of sense. This is something that she maybe, you know, um, re recognizes. So meridians would be a great thing to test for her. Let's go ahead and do that now. Meridians are embodiments of mind, body, and spirit. They all come together. So let's just talk a little bit about this screen here. It's telling you the top numerical scored um, meridians, but it's not telling you the ones in blue. So it won't give you the lowest ones, which are also significant. It's a bit of a hiccup. Um, not in the technology of the program, like the algorithm is correct, but it doesn't take into account that low numbers are significant too. So I want you to take that into account. So kidney, triple heater, lung, then it has the time of day. So if you have an imbalance here in this meridian, there is a broken flow in the meridian. What you might experience is from five to seven, you get very sleepy, all right? Alternatively, three to five, if there's a lung imbalance, this person may tell you I wake up between three and five in the morning, all right? So the timing is probably a time of day maybe that they're not their best or even a time of day that they get their aggravation. So they actually get their migraine at this time or they feel worse at this time of day. So the timing could be very important. You could write those down and take note of those. All right, so that's the kidney, the triple heater, and the lung. Now, if you have my mastery guide, go to the mastery guide and look up those meridians and read what is going on with them. Uh, what are they all about? For example, kidney, if a, if a woman is over um, like 45, if she's in the perimenopausal or menopausal time, this kidney stuff might be an issue. Of course, that can relate to bladder, but kidney is also the kidney yin energy. And when the kidney yin energy is deficient, then women have hot flashes or they have some type of imbalance that is representing that uh, cutoff of the energy. A triple heater is, and, and there's an emotion that's related to it, so you can say this emotion to them, fear and indecision. Now, they may not resonate with it. They may not have fear and indecision, but if they do, it will help them to discharge energy in the recognition of that particular thing, of that particular item, that particular emotion. Triple heater is really about the digestion. So the triple heater is an area energetically where um, you warm up the food and it helps to turn the food into chi. So if this triple heater is not functioning properly, you will have poor digestion, you will have poor energy, you will not feel good. And so it says this triple heater is out of balance and the emotions related to it are hopelessness, depression, despair. Again, Kendra might not be feeling these things or she might feel them um, in a temporal way, like she might feel them maybe at certain times or they're, they're in passing she feels it occasionally. So there might be some of that in there and that isn't because she has something to, that she's necessarily depressed about, but it's because of the crimping off of the energy flow in that area. So these things are reflexive. If you have the imbalance in your body, it can cause the emotional issue. If you have the emotional issue, it may cause the crimping off of the flow within the body. So it can be bi-directional that way. We don't always know what the source is. Then we've got the lung imbalance and so um, grief and intolerance related to the lung. Now, we don't have these explanations here in front of us on the genius, 
but you can go to my mastery guide. Open up my mastery guide, the e-version or the hard copy. If you have that, if you don't have it, you can get it on my website at awakentotalhealth.com. Man, I just did a whole run of copies of this thing and they, they go really, really fast. So you can go to my website and go to awakentotalhealth.com, type in mastery guide, you get the e-version, you could get the uh, hard copy, you could get both if you like to have both handy. And then you can go right into the mastery guide and then look up the liver meridian so you can learn more about it or the bladder meridian so you can um, you know learn more about it right the um, nerve the emotions for the bladder are about hate and guilt and shock and that the positive emotions actually are joy and peace and contentment so you could experience both all right, but something is definitely out of balance with that. We want to put that in there. Now, something I say every time, you guys, and I do want to just review it, is that this is the pretest area. Don't make any permanent or definitive decisions about the person based on what you find in this testing area. All of the real testing, the significant testing, happens in progressive insights. This is the pretest. Now, there may be things that the person says, oh, that's absolutely me. I totally resonate with that. And if that's the case, then um, for sure, I would agree with that and just you know go with that knowledge. If it really resonates with them, it probably is true. Now, we had some interesting stuff over here. Um, now, I guess we could just interject here. We could hop in here and we can just go to the aura and do a quick scan. So we don't have the picture. We won't see the picture there. But let's just do a quick scan of the aura. This is something that Tracy asked about. So if it's working properly, let's see. There we go. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good scan of the aura. I don't as a practice do an in intensive um, analysis of the aura so other people might be better than I am of this I just I've never been that you know that really that's gonna make that much of a d determination but what we will generally see is um, that the aura will move from a cloudy space where it looks more cloudy to a place of more clarity and it will generally move from lower chakra colors to colors that are in the, the color scheme of green, purple, and blue. So that's what we're looking at there. Also, we want to, now we don't know exactly what this is. I mean, this really would take a more sophisticated aura program dedicated to balancing the aura. You're just going to see general changes here. The energy is being pulled in from the left side and being pushed out through the right side. The person takes in the energy through the left side of their being and then pushes it out through the right side. If you think I'm getting this backwards, it's because this person is facing you. So this is their left side and this is their right side. You're not behind them, you're facing them. So something is going on for sure here, but we don't know anything about the nature. There's no algorithms or anything to tell us the nature of what she's pulling in here or what's happening here, but we can probably conclude that there's something going on, something that she's trying to pull into her field. Generally, we like to see things sort of work themselves out being more symmetrical on both sides. There's something going on here. So if there's cloudiness or a pea soup look, to the aura then we want to see that get more clarified we don't want it to seem muddy so we'd like to see this clear up let's take a picture of this and then we can look at it later we can also I thought that he moved an email functionality in here and I thought you could email it right from the page but maybe that has disappeared apparently. Okay, so let's now go to the rest of our testing. We'll test the aura a little bit later. 
You can also balance right in the aura. So that's another option. If you wanted to, now remember all of the items in here are sort of pre-test items. We haven't taken them through the progressive insights, but it's still possible that you can just, well, let me do that. Yeah, you can balance right here. I was thinking it would take me to progressive insights. But you can balance here for three minutes. I mean, the items that are in here are still significant, but you just haven't prioritized them. So that's the deal there. So if we do this for a couple of minutes, we'll actually get the begin, we should get the begin analysis back and we should be able to analyze it again. So, and then we can go back again and see it. So what we're really looking for are those general changes that we're seeing um, that can be really, really helpful. Okay, so excellent, excellent, you guys. So she is very responsive to the frequencies and we can see that we're already sort of moving and clarifying whatever was here and we're changing that green that was being pulled in here and we're moving more to um, the purples and so forth and she's pulling it in from the left side. So one more picture here and certainly you can send these pictures to your client afterwards and show them how things are changing. You know, I want to sort of, I, mean, I wanted to go to those organs and body systems and see if there are any similarities here. You know, one thing that I think that we're learning in consciousness is with energy medicine, it isn't always about the longer time that you send these frequencies. It isn't about length of time or forcing the frequencies into the person. It really is the subtle energy and how receptive or open that person is to the subtle energy. It's possible that you could change their energy in one minute or two minutes. It, we're not talking about that the longer you run the frequencies necessarily that you're making um, so much of a profound difference. Um, it really is about the quality of the balancing and what you're choosing to balance that makes the difference. Now again, looking for the patterns, this urinary piece matches the kidney piece, the kidney meridian piece. They're, they are related, although you know, kidney and bladder meridian are related. They're not exactly related directly to the organ system. They're much more far-reaching. So they go all throughout the body, but they have this theme uh, of the kidney meridian or the bladder meridian. So there is a connection. There's some muscular stuff going on here. We don't know because we didn't, weren't able to talk to Kendra. And there's a respiratory issue, lymphatic, or, you know, this isn't, you know, there's a respiratory energetic issue. That's how we really talk about it. So we go back here. And then organs, so is there something in the organs maybe that matches what's going on with everything else? And we see absolutely there is the kidney. So the kidney, the kidneys themselves, the kidney meridian, the bladder um, piece, the bladder body system of the bladder. So this would be a good place if you know about other modalities and that's what I try to teach in my class is the actual physical aspect of these modalities. So, you guys, if you prefer a better image, send Ryan a, 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 send Ryan a message. Um, I think that this is a perfectly fine way to go, but I, I just between you and me and the fence posts, I think aesthetically we're not, we're not, you know, winning the, you know, winning the award here. I just, some of these, <laughs> he needs some help. So, you know, if you have some suggestions or whatnot, you can send it. If you absolutely love this graphic, then you could send him that as well. I think you guys can read between the lines there. So I believe that we saw um, some liver imbalance um, in the other one. We can have to go check and see these meridians again. But you that's what makes you a great practitioner, start, starting to recognize these places exactly. Look at that, the meridian and the organ systems. They're not exactly the same, and you really need to understand Chinese medicine to know that, but they are energetic representations. This is all about energy. So we really see that liver theme. So the thing that makes you a good practitioner is recognizing those echoes within the program. Look at where you see that repeated. If you see it repeated several times throughout the program, doesn't that give you more 
of a confidence that that information is not just coming up randomly. And when you talk to that person, if you learn about health, and as I said, that's what a lot of my programs are about. They're to teach you both the energetic and the physical. And what I started to say about Kendra was, for her, it would be very likely that working with um, the Andreas Moritz kidney tea, you guys know him, he wrote about the gallbladder liver cleanse, his kidney tea blend, or in the um, Picana remedies, we have a particular kidney cleanser. Some of you have that um, testing panel, that testing library for the Picana res remedies that I've talked about before. Um, in the Undas, we use Unda number two um, and number 20, I believe. We use some of the Unda um, European biological remedies. So what I'm saying is that for her, whatever it is, it could be just juniper. It could be a juniper tea or some type of kidney herb. You know, herbs, I believe, are, we're going to find out at the end of the day as far as physical remedies that you take, that it's the herbs over supplements. Um, you know, every chance you get, use an herb because an herb is a type of food, you know, and it should be um, used very carefully and cautiously because it could also be a drug. But some of these great things that we use for the kidney, like ju juniperus, you know, juniper is a great kidney cleanser. So there are other herbs that you could utilize, but in the fall, you know, autumn is an excellent time for doing kidney and liver cleanse. So that would be a good combination for her kidney liver cleanse right now. Now I want to um, introduce you guys to this vessel program that I'm working on. I'm just going to add everything to her profile for now. And then we're, we'll go back here and we'll do a little test. So every time you test someone, you also are clearing them. There's a clearing and a cleansing going on as you're testing them. Now, we don't want to necessarily pay attention to all of these things that are coming up here, even though there's probably some significance. I just want to go right to that vessel program. And these are um, some of the, let me just go down here. These are some of the things that I've been working on for the vessel program. It's just about done. And it's going to come with a guide and some pictures to understand what causes the buildup in the vessels. The vessels, this means the, you know, the major arteries of the system all over the body down to the capillaries. You guys, once these start to become less functional or they start to get some placking and build up, this is when you're not getting the major circulation through your body. And if you're not getting circulation through your body, you're not getting oxygen, you're not getting nutrition. You're also not able to clear the waste as effectively. You're not having as good um, functioning as you would want to. Now, first of all, there may be a lot of things that come up for people. We're getting a lot of good stuff here. So right away, this might, you know, tell the person, you don't, you want to caution them, like, you know, don't be alarmed. This can come up for a lot of people. We want to look for patterns in the types of arteries that are coming up. That's why there are graphics within this program so that you can look at where the arteries are as well as um, some explanations. So let's get um, all of them in here. But it's, a, it's an amazing thing to be able to identify these. I mean, where else are you really going to do this um, except in a biofeedback program? and particularly a quantum biofeedback program. So you're able to find out where the energetic blocks are, and then we're going to be able to test for some solutions. So, um, and then you're going to be able to look for patterns. So pop popliteal is down in the leg. Splenic is near the spleen and the digestion. So this may be related, if you think about it, that splenic artery may be related to um, the digestive issue having to do with the triple heater. So the triple heater is known to be connected and related to that splenic energy. The celiac artery is, I believe it's around the digestive system as well, left common carotid in the neck, and we do see another neck um, artery here, the internal carotid. Now again, this is not to invoke um, fear, but it's to take action. It could just be a mild block. It could be completely insignificant, but it could tell us that this is the pre-phase 
of decreased circulation. And so this is a really powerful way to open up that energy and also get hints about what physical actions you need to take to open up that energy. External iliac artery, and I've already included it, it's down in the um, leg area, left subclavian artery. So there's a lot of um, you know, uh, vessels that are in the neck. So maybe it's muscular dysfunction that is affecting the vessels in some way, right? Maybe it's not, you know, needing to, maybe it's needing to stretch the neck and move the neck. So then there's a whole bunch of other, we've got all of the, um, let's see, we've got the head and the neck arteries, we've got the arm vessels, the leg vessels. So you could see what an extensive um, clearing you can do. I believe that that is the gift of biofeedback and particularly one that you can program in this way is that you can really go right down to the micro level and you can get a full scan. There's really no limit on this. It's only limited to your imagination and your knowledge base about the human body. So this is a tremendous opportunity to really affect your physiology. We know inherently we have the ability to heal ourselves. Most of us who are in this class right now, that resonates with us. We say, yes, we could, you know, think ourselves well. But what is the vehicle to doing that? What is the handbook on doing that? What are the actual means of doing that? I believe that this form of biofeedback is one of those ways that you access that. So let's just go to the solutions. We've got a vessel solutions down here. And I also believe that as people are finding out more about what's going on with them, they're gaining new, a new knowledge. They're also saying, well, what is it that I can do about this? And yes, people want to be able to run that energy. They want to be able to use these frequencies. But I believe it's the natural inclination of human beings to say, well, what physically can I do? Are there actions that I can take um, and are there physical foods or herbs that I can employ for this? And that's why um, this is, I think, hugely empowering and you as a practitioner get to see which are the things that are the most effective for their energy field. And that way it's not you telling them the results of a study, although that can be informative. And it can help us to identify things that could be potentially helpful, but we take it one level further when we explain to them what is helpful to them based on um, their energy field, what is resonating for them. And I love you know results like this because we're seeing this is telling us even in these low numbers that these are very highly resonant with this person. It's a little confusing when you first learn the program, but when you're working with solutions and they are low or high, this is where they have a high affinity for the person. This is where they have a high attraction to the person at this moment for a particular issue. So CoQ10, and then I also added a particular type of CoQ10, which is the perilloquinolone quinone, which is a form of CoQ10. Uh, turmeric iodine. Iodine is incredibly important for your vessel health. Really interesting for heart health. You want to use iodine. Iodine is um, has there are receptors all over the body in al almost every part of the body. There are receptors for iodine, and yet it's one of our most you know uh, you know missed herbs or no, nutrients that we really need. And of course you can find iodine in all types of kelp and seaweed. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of those. Being a very healthy eater, I'm, I've never been a fan of any of the seafood-like foods. So I have a huge disadvantage there, but it is good to then get it in kelp capsules or um, I have this herbal mix called Dr. C7 that you can ask me about. And hawthorn berry is just bar none to uh, herbs that can be helpful for the heart. So if you have any type of a cardiovascular issue or it's something that you worry about or it's something that your family had, I mean the first thing to do is if you're worried about cardiovascular disease is to stop eating meat, dairy, and free oils. Stop eating meat, dairy, and free oils except as a very, very minor 
um, almost like a medicinal addition to your food. So if you just feel that your life will not be the same without chicken or grass-fed beef, then these things become maybe uh, two ounces a week or something like that. They become the most titrated sort of homeopathic doses where you get the energetic you know, input from those foods. But those are the things that really affect the vessels and processed foods. Any types of toxins actually do affect the vessels um, negatively. So, but Hawthorne is sort of the salve for all of those things. So if you worry about those things, my favorite form of this is Hawthorne Berry Solid Extract. So Hawthorne Berry Solid Extract. So let's now go, um, another really good thing, of course, of all of the um, screens is to add in the emotions and add in the flower essences. There never seems to be, let's just for time, let's just do our flower essences. If you're going to skip emotions, um, if you're going to skip emotions like this for time, don't skip the flower essences because they represent both the emotions and the solution. So they represent the emotional holding pattern and the solution for the emotional holding pattern. It's also really great because you don't um, get your client upset. So if you don't want them to have to look straight on, oh, she really resonates with all of these wonderful flower essences. If they, you know, if you don't want them to to see, oh gosh, they have rage, they have hatred, they have anger. You could skip the emotions and just work with the essences because it's going to reveal the underlying issue anyway. So in anything you're working on, vessels, liver, lungs, fibromyalgia, cancer, you always want to include flower essences and emotions or just the flower essences themselves. And again, if you have my mastery guide, go to awakentotalhealth.com and type mastery guide into the search bar. And I think most of the people who are in this class already have the mastery guide. And there's a, a guide to all of the flower essences in there. So there's a really quick, where you can just look at it really quickly and get a quick reference to those. So those who are in the um, biofeedback practitioner class, we've even gone even further with this. Okay, so just a peek with these um, essences percolating to the top. We know that um, these flower essences will be really helpful for her and she resonates with those high vibrational remedies. So elm, and chestnut bud are really um, two top remedies for her. So we've got the overwhelmed by responsibility is elm and chestnut bud is, I don't like this definition because it says failure to learn from mistakes. I think we have to find a better definition for that. I'm gonna have to edit that even in the mastery guide, but um, maybe takes more time to recognize patterns or something like that. I don't know, we're, we'll have to find, maybe Kelly, you have a good chestnut bud interpretation because you're such an expert in those flower essences. So we have lymphatic, the left gastric artery. Again, I think there's something going on with digestion. And in the um, training video for the vessel program, I'm gonna show you how to combine the nerves and the arteries together. So that's really bonus when you combine those nerves and the arteries together for a really powerful balancing session. Okay, body systems, L-arginine. L-arginine is one of the best amino acids here. I just spoke highly of the herbs, but as far as supplements are, are concerned, L-arginine is a pretty good amino acid for opening up the vessels. So that's why it's included in that. Uh, white chestnut, so another, um, it's interesting all of the chestnuts huh, that are flower essences and um, Bach really believed in these as um, shapeshifters for humanity that really, really help to change your frequency and your energy that can help to heal you on the physical level <clears throat> as well as the energetic, as well as the emotional. So um, we've got white chestnut here. White chestnut is unwanted thoughts and mental arguments. So this could even be something that she's arguing within herself. Um, another flower essence, we've got the infrahyoid branch. Now, um, let's just see what we've got. Infection, energetic disturbance, the sternocleidomastoid branch, the celiac artery. Well, a lot of arteries will come up because we tested a lot of them. So they're gonna definitely be there. 
we could balance her for a couple of minutes and then in almost every case I'm doing my three minute continuous balancing uh, which is this is where we test and balance and then we add one item and then we test again and we want to see what things keep percolating to the top of the progressive insights because we can really peel the onion here and go to a deeper layer. We can keep going to deeper layers. All right. Okay, Kendra says, with the muscular, I broke both feet and ankles a year ago. Oh my goodness, Kendra, both at the same time? My goodness, bless your heart. I mean, that's really, um, that's a lot. Well, I have to find out more about that when I talk to you. And she says, I felt a shift with you, and I'll do another time and verify. Okay, well, it's really, really good to have you um, on, and I appreciate you volunteering. All right, so she fell down 12 concrete steps. My goodness. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's see. Positive emotions for chestnut. Okay, and so Kirsty has lent us some nice positive emotions for not learning from one's mistakes. And she says, I am learning something new from every experience. I see things as they are. Earlier and earlier, I'm realizing what is coming towards me and recognizing possible errors. Because think of, you know, the higher power or universal consciousness. Could you imagine universal consciousness, you know, saying to you, well, you really don't learn from your mistakes. That sounds <laughs> very like um, ego personified. Whoever interpreted, whoever wrote that particular interpretation seems to be projecting a judgmental part of themselves. So <clears throat> those are really good, Kirsty. Thank you so much for that. Um, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to peel another... Um, Let's see, Kendra says, chestnut applies not willing to let go unhealthy relationships again, but getting closer. And again, I'm sure universal consciousness looks at that with very compassionate eyes, um, seeing that there's something that, you know, you needed to learn in all of those experience, which is totally legitimate and um, highly beneficial in some way. So I think we need some softer interpretations there, and Kirsty has given us some very, very good ones to go with. So when this runs for three minutes, what I usually do is I'll, I'll retest it. But let's now go to Tracy's question here. Let's go back to our aura and take a look here. And now let's retest in this aura field. All right, now I do think that there's a little glitch going on here. So be sure to um, make a little note here to send to Ryan, rw at quantumhealthapps.com. All right, let's get his email up here. We can um, send him a little love note here, rw at quantumhealthapps.com, that says um, there may be an issue in the Aura program as the prompt does not come up for balancing in mid program. So if you guys can catch that comment and you can copy and paste it to Ryan with that email address, that always helps because you know the people who are closest to you, you go, oh, okay, and now I'm not really listening. So it's better if it comes from you guys. An excellent observation here. I don't see the begin analysis, which should come up right here. So let's balance for a minute. I think if, if we even just touch this for one minute, the the rebalancing um, ability will come up, but it should really come up when we um, go right into this screen. So the begin analysis should come up when we go right into the screen. Now let's see if it comes up now. And there we go. So now we'll be able to retest. It really should come up when we go right into the screen. We shouldn't have to run frequencies for it to be re rekindled here, to, to reappear here. Okay, so great. All right, excellent, you guys. So this is really, really good. We can look at all three of them. Um, excellent work for Kendra. We can um, do a round of applause for her. So wonderful work. You see that she's really pulled in those high energies. 
and there's much more evenness. There's almost no sign, although you can see it just a slight pattern here, at least I can see it, um, but she's almost cleared all of this out. She's cleared all of what was above here. This needs some more clearing, so we've only done three or four minutes of energy. So this is still a little bit more of a, what I call like a pea soup or a bit of a muddy color, so we'd want to see that clear up a bit more. So you get the idea. I don't do like a really direct, you know, interpretation here, um, but I am, you know, able to read between the lines of the general changes in the aura. And if you really want to take it to an another level, you know, some people are experts in the auric field and the colors. And I certainly do invite you, if you want to go for it, to develop more of a subtlety recognition in this area. So here we have her first one, here we have the second one, and here we have the third one. And in fact, for your client, it's really great to take pictures at these different stages so that they can see that they're moving through phases of healing during the session. And I suppose, you know, really this is a great um, tool because people really, you know, show me. People are, we're all show me types of people, so show me that this is working because this is something I can't smell, taste, you know, so forth. It's, you know, invisible in many ways. It's subtle. And so seeing the changes in the aura is a powerful way of being able to really bring that to people's attention that, yes, something is happening. Something is changing. So then when we peel the layer again, we're getting a few more of the vessels, the left common carotid artery. You know, this is the place that they do that Doppler testing right at the neck area to see if there's um, calcification and changes in the vessels. So these are very commonly tested uh, for people, but this does not mean that there's something imminent at all whatsoever. It means that this is an opportunity to open up flow in this area, and I would instantly um, correlate it with a muscular issue, that it, more stretching, more yoga, more movement. There's that triple heater connection. We've got clematis as the flower essence and water violet. So this water violet is quiet self-reliance. That's what the water um, is about. And then the person can determine if that's something that they maybe relied too much on. That's up to them or that's their nature or whatever that me meaning it has for them. Um, I really have to revise some of these in the mastery guide. Even though they give you a flavor, I'd like to see them be more positive. So uh, dreaming of the future without working in the present is clematis. Again, I think I would, I would um, edit that and sort of upgrade it a little bit. All right, so Tracy says thanks uh, for showing the aura. And um, Sophie said, I love, love, love that aura. And... Uh, I think uh, Karen sending some positive energy to Kendra. Thank you so much. And it's Sophie says it's funny because chestnut was about relationships and pink aura is about relationships about love. So yeah, so we don't know uh, all of Kendra's story, but sounds like she mentioned the patterns that she's working with. So you guys, for anybody who says, um, let's do a little bit more balancing while I'm talking here. And again, we've got that set to the three minutes because I like the three minutes as the point to um, peel the layer. You guys, what I find really my sweet spot of working with people is four um, cycles of this three minute balancing. And it's hard to imagine that you make dynamic changes in 12 minutes, but it, it that's what happens. You know, you can get so really focused with the progressive insights and focusing on those ones that are really of the high um, priority, and you're really focusing on what really matters to their energy field at this time, and then you're peeling the onion after three minutes. Okay, we dealt with that. Let's go to a deeper layer. We dealt with that. Let's go to a deeper layer. Bringing in the flower essences, which are high-value catalysts for helping people to move through it. Um, when somebody is is really in distress or they don't feel well, think of the value of, you know, like your mom coming over to comfort you when you're sick, right? And putting that arm around you and it's like, oh dear, you know, everything's going to be okay. Don't you worry about it. It's that level of emotional comfort that we really get through using 
the energy of the flower essences. Don't worry, whatever it is, everything's going to be okay. So those frequencies really help us to heal on a deep level that sort of everything else physical will follow. Um, so that's why they're so powerful within here. That's why we only need 12 minutes. Now you can do more, but I really um, encourage you to keep peeling the onion through these three minute increments. The three minutes will discharge or throw off that which is no longer needed. And every time you peel a layer, you continue to unwind and go to what is at the heart of the matter. What are the significant issues? And you'll see that because the things that really weren't that important, even though they were high priority in the first three minutes, will get blown off. They'll go right to the bottom of the list. But some things will remain and you will continue to see them float high to the top. Um, so they will remain at the top of the list and you'll say, oh gosh, you know, this particular issue is really important to that, to that person. Okay, so let's take final questions. Um, I like the four, three minutes, thanks, says Kendra. And Kendra says, I feel so much calmer after the balance. And, and we know that she is a, we're going to go a little bit over the hour, you guys, because I just couldn't get online until about nine minutes past the hour. So if you need to um, take off for work purposes, I totally understand. But I'm going to stay on a bit longer so we can um, finish up with this. So um, now Tracy says, uh, okay, so first let me say to Kendra, Kendra's very um, receptive to the energies and I don't know why this oh this comes up after the three minutes and says that she's responded positively but I honestly don't understand why this is not more than 50 percent so I'm not sure what what has happened there when you get that chime something she's gone through some type of a cycle there that's positive and she's getting that notification I think we already have this one in there so we want to sort of add one more thing let's just add this lung and we do another peeling of the layer because she's very, very receptive to these high vibrational frequencies. So her consciousness is getting it and she's also receiving it. She's intuitive enough to receive it and feel that effect. So many people are getting the frequencies. They're not always recognizing that the frequencies are having a positive effect. And this is problematic from the point of view that if somebody really doesn't want to get better or they don't want to believe in this it probably isn't going to work for them but if they if they have enough of the sessions and you've explained it in a rational way and you it's funny because part of this process works because as you unfold the information and communicate the information to them in a very grounded and accurate way, explaining this is energetic information, they begin to recognize the truth of that information within themselves. And it builds that confidence that yes, this is really able to access their energy field and as such, the frequencies may then be very beneficial for them. So your presentation of this information is incredibly important because that's how even in demonstrations, you know, when I'm out and about or 15 minute online demonstrations or if I'm out at an event, people are saying, gosh, you know, my chiropractor just told me that or gosh, that's so true or I'm dealing with that right now. Even Kendra said she recognized that in her relationships and that's how we build this, you know, how do you say to people, we, we probably are guilty of not doing enough testimonials, but you guys, I don't know if you recognize this, unless, you know, online testimonials and studies, they can be falsified. Now, it's we do have really great um, true testimonials, and we do have people who really love our program. We need to get that more out there either way, and we'd love to hear your experience. If we can post it as a testimonial, please send it to me. I would love to post it and share it with people. And we were trying to do short interviews with people who are using the program, like Sophie did an interview. And if you want to be interviewed as a practitioner, even if you think um, you have a small practice or just to talk about your experience, we'd love to have it. The bottom line of what I'm trying to say is that the experience is personal. The tr experience of the truth is personal. When they experience it within themselves, that is what is the most important experience, not what other people are saying, not what the double blind placebo 
study say, but what they experience within themselves. And the more we can give them the opportunity to experience that, then all the better. Tracy says, does anyone feel overstimulated after a session? Um, this is something that I don't run into, but if you work with a lot of energetically sensitive people, you may want to find your own groove for doing this. Like perhaps you want to add in a remedy that is known to be calming for that person into the mix, or perhaps you only work for literally six minutes at a time. Your sessions are only six minutes long. If you have a particular person who tells you, I'm energetically sensitive, I react to everything, then what we want to do is be very careful in working with them. We want to do shorter sessions. Sometimes it's only doing one minute of balancing in the beginning. So if you have someone you suspect is very energetically sensitive and you want to go slow with them, go slow with them. It's really hard to predict that because these are such subtle frequencies. You could expect someone to get a reaction or overstimulated from a Rife machine because they're just shaking these general frequencies into their energy field. That's what exposing themselves to the frequencies is. It's much more physical. This is so subtle. However, if the subtle energies begin to move energies that they've not moved in a very long time or it gives them more of a recognition of themselves than they've been able to have previously, it could, you know, it could feel stimulating in some way. It could be overstimulating, but it's not the nature of the frequencies. It's an experience that happens within them. And the best way that you can be a partner or a positive partner in that is recognizing that from the beginning and taking steps to be very gentle in um, how you move along with them. So I hope that that sort of clarifies that in some way. Um, Deborah D says, thank you. Thank you for being here, Deborah, and come back anytime. Okay, so Sophie says it can happen with pets, just a half an hour with the pets or they are overstimulated, especially cats or young children. That's from my experience, and she does lots of biofeedback. I don't do meridians in the evening, for instance, because the person will be restless at night. Okay, this is good information. Um, if I find someone responded by overstimulated, I would run them again and see what would calm them from Dennis. And Dennis, I didn't even think that you were on with us today. Thanks for being here. Where where are you? It's so weird. I'm not I'm not everything's not in alphabetical order today for some reason. I was gonna mention something we were talking about and I was like, oh Dennis had you know, off on off on other adventures today. So good. Thanks for being here. And he said again, if I found someone to respond, uh, they were overstimulated, I would run them again and see what would calm them. So yeah, you could always include, um, for people who are highly energetically sensitive, you could, I'm trying to figure out if this would calm them down or amp them up, because I was thinking of the solfeggio frequencies. Um, one thing you could do is use the frequency of magnesium. Now, this is something I've talked about in my tonic programs, and this will be the last point of the day. If you test somebody for magnesium, let's, let's just do it now for um, Kendra. Now, magnesium, so she's a perfect example, it's not necessarily lighting up for her, but magnesium is known for its calming properties, okay? There's wonderful writing on even people who are having heart attacks, um, that the magnesium is so quelling to the body and so calming to the cardiovascular musculature that it'll actually stop a heart attack if one is happening. This is through the um, intravenous administration of magnesium chloride. So what we can do here is we can put the magnesium into the quick zap, for some reason that, that got in there, and then we just run that singular frequency on its own intentionally, even though we've not tested in progressive insights, as a way to calm that person down. Okay, so that's some, some ideas for you, Tracy. It's a very, very good question. And Sophie said, don't run the meridians in the evening. So what we do after this um, session is it gets uploaded to my website under the Genius Training menu, and it also goes to the Facebook groups and the YouTube channel. So um, if you don't know what those are and you don't know how to access them, send me an email at ariel at awakentotalhealth.com 
and I will get all of that taken care of for you. For the Vessel program will be available soon and you'll be getting the newsletter um, about that and the weekly articles in the newsletter coming out. Um, I'm hoping to get them out every Monday night so that you're reading them on Tuesday morning. So I'm really trying to get better at that. And um, the NERV program will be like an add-on that you can get bundled together. So people who have the NERV program, you know, they can add on the VESSEL program because a lot of people have the NERV program. And then you can bundle them together if you want, Sharon. Thanks for that question. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And um, really appreciate everybody's participation. If you have any other questions, please email them to me. I'll be back again next week. And remember, you can still join the Biofeedback Practitioner Program. It's been an amazing program. You can get the recordings of the first three weeks. So if you didn't think you could be a part of it, you can. And it really focuses on strategies and protocols for success. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Take care and be well. Bye-bye for now.